Jay and I are the king and queen of gaslighting. <laughs> when I grew up, I felt really powerless, so I used gaslighting as a way to feel powerful. And Jay grew up being kind of a gaslighter too, <laughs> to get people on his side so he could always be right. But he's not like that anymore. But he's really good at gaslighting. And now we use it as a joke between us and we play around. But who better to talk to us and teach us about gaslighting than the master himself? <laughs> so Jay, what does gaslighting mean? Gaslighting is basically twisting reality. It's just another word for twisting reality or convincing someone that their reality isn't their reality or convincing them that their judgment is wrong. I always summarize it to messing with someone's reality. Okay, that, that's a great explanation. Thanks. So how can we recognize it when it's being done to us then? So there's two main ways to recognize it externally or internally. So you can recognize it externally by someone who is slighting you, right? A slight, like an emotional slight. Maybe they're dismissing your input or they're distracting you from the real issue. Like you raise an issue and they distract you from it oh, okay. and wave it away. Right. Or you say something happened and they outright deny it. They flat out say, no, that's not reality. That's not what happened. But this method isn't always reliable because sometimes there are situations where it's important for someone to deny what you're saying. You're like, you broke that glass. And they're like, no, I didn't. It was the pet. It was 100% the pet. So in that situation, that could be gaslighting or it could be true. Maybe the pet did do it. Right. So sometimes people have to deny what you're saying because it's just not true. And if you label everybody as a gaslighter who's denying what you say, then right. it's not a very reliable method. So with the external method, it's more about looking for a bunch of signs adding up, right? Mm -hmm. If a pattern, a pattern of distracting you, a pattern of denying, a pattern of manipulating you, a pattern of crocodile tears, a pattern of whatever. Oh, so like the woke left. <laughs> I thought, aren't you part of the woke left? Ew, no. Isn't your daughter part of the woke left? She is. My children are. I am not. no longer. I have... Say goodbye to all of that. All right. Well, either way, <laughs> anyone from any walk of life can gaslight. If you really want a list of external signs and emotional manipulations you can look for and spot, there's a book called Gaslighting by Katie Lexia or something mm -hmm. uh, that has a big giant list in there of oh. what to look out for. Okay. The other way to recognize gaslighting is by your internal feelings. Internal feelings are yours and yours alone. Now, the thing about them is sometimes we're out of touch with our feelings and we don't really understand what they mean. But in general, if you feel insecure around someone else or you're expressing to them and their responses make you feel more insecure, they make you feel confused or disbelieving of yourself, doubting yourself, these are all feelings that may indicate you're being gaslit. Say you've noticed a pattern of abuse or someone keeps stepping over your boundaries. And so you go and confront them on that. And then they start telling you it didn't happen and it's not what you think and that's not the way it is at all. And now you're like, wow, did, did I get confused? Did I misread something? Am I not as sharp as I thought I was? Am I making this up? Am I just traumatized and scarred and projecting this on someone else? So you start doubting yourself and your feelings are all haywire. And now you're believing the gaslighter. But again, just like with the external method, there may be some issues because sometimes we are projecting. And sometimes when a person sets us straight and says, I wasn't stepping over your boundaries, they really weren't. We were making it up. And so this is why gaslighting is so tricky because it's not a clear cut answer. It's not just either or. Oh, I'm being gaslit. Obviously, there's all the signs. Oh, I'm being gaslit. My feelings are going haywire. You can't say that. You can't do that. It has to be on a case-by-case -case basis, and you have to look for patterns. And a huge part of why it's difficult to recognize gaslighting is because you can't recognize someone else lying to you, manipulating you, and steering you wrong until you know yourself. If you don't know who you are, and if you're not confident in your reality, and if you don't use logic and emotion in healthy ways to navigate life, then anyone can manipulate you. And you can never really say 
if they are or if they aren't, because you're not very reliable internally, like with yourself. You're not aligned with yourself. And so that's a deeper root cause to why it's hard to recognize gaslighting. But anyone can do it. It just takes practice. You have to get more in tune with yourself and your feelings. You have to use more critical thinking, more logic, look for more evidence, observe more patterns, and uh, eventually you will spot it. That's a really excellent uh, point. Thank you. Because I didn't realize I was doing anything wrong when I was doing it for so long to, to people because I didn't know who I was. I hated myself. I was unaware of everything about myself. So this really makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I feel like I just had one of those ah moments uh, again on camera because I, I didn't realize that's why I didn't know for so long. And when people would accuse me occasionally, because very few ever called me on it, but when I, I was called on, I was like, how can you say that when I knew damn well that's what was happening? But I didn't at the same time, you know, I mean, I knew I was lying, but I didn't know. And I was trying to manipulate in, in that way, not until later on. And I, I knew you and knew myself more. So it was interesting. Thank you. You're so good. Thank you. <laughs> You're so helpful. So then that answers my next question, which was how can we recognize when we're doing the gaslighting to other people. Uh, and like I said in the intro, like you're so good. At, I always tell you, you're like the king of it. And you always get like, kind of like about it when I tease you, because you, if you did do it to me, you would be really good. And, and it would like mess with my head. Uh, so I'm so grateful that you're not like that anymore. Yeah, me too. I don't ever want to be like that. Uh, and and when you do, you ought to, you always say, babe, I'm, I'm gaslighting. I'm just joking, you know? And, and, and I know because we've been together long enough. So it's really, it's really nice. And, and it's easier for me to see now when, <laughs> when the times that I, I want to reach for the, for that. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And I'm glad you brought that up. Because a good way to check if you're manipulating others or gaslighting others, again, this might need you to be fairly in tune with yourself, is to ask yourself, is what I'm doing in the best interests of this other person or am I doing it for my own agenda? Mm -hmm. Am I doing this to help and uplift another towards whatever their goals and dreams and, and path is? Or am I doing this to get them on my side to convince them of my view, to be right, to serve my agenda, to get my way? Am I doing it selfishly? Because the gaslighting only comes from one of those paths or one of those choices. Right. That's a great question to ask yourself. Yeah. And I guess this would be even more helpful for me because I, I don't really ask myself those questions. I just recognize, recognize the feeling that I have of this doesn't feel good. But and maybe because I'm more aware now of myself, but this, this is really great, really helpful. Thank you. Um, okay. So moving on, we have mentioned a couple of times already that you were really good at gaslighting. <laughs> oh, I love you so much. And, and you spent a long time in your past long ago doing this to people on a regular. So how did you stop? It was a super long time ago, but if you've been watching this podcast, you've heard some of my story. Life humbled me pretty hard, right? I had everything bad happen to me or... <laughs> just about. And uh, that made me question a lot of things and take a hard look at myself and my life and make some big decisions and some big changes. And one of those decisions was no matter how many days left I have on this planet, and it might be one because I was in a really dark place at the time, mm -hmm. I'm going to uplift others. And uplifting others, like I mentioned, means no gaslighting. If you're going to uplift others, if you're going to help them on their path, be valuable to them, on their journey, on their goal, consciously, you're not looking out for your own agenda and you're never saying a single thing or manipulating them emotionally in any way that's not going to serve them and be in their best interest. And I think that's a decision really everyone on the planet should just make. I mean, obviously everyone's different and has their own life path and I'm not judging and everyone's allowed to do whatever, but they just should. <laughs> Seriously, we'd have such a better world if mm -hmm. everyone just decided, look, no matter what happens, I, we all have a certain amount of time mm -hmm. on this planet. No matter what happens, even if I die, I'm going to spend my moments uplifting others. Yeah. And this will eliminate gaslighting. 
for the most part. Right. Unless someone's confused or like it's accidental gaslighting out of ignorance and so on. And so like most decisions, once you make it, it's pretty much done. If you ever talk to anyone who's made a decision, I can talk to someone who's thinking of dieting or I can talk to someone who's made a decision mm -hmm. that got out of the hospital and I'm changing my life. They both kind of talk the same, right? They both will say, I'm on a diet now. I'm doing a diet now. I'm mm -hmm. exercising now. Mm -hmm. I've changed my life. Yeah. They'll both say that. Mm -hmm. But one of them, it's hollow words and they haven't changed anything and they're going to backslide in five, 10 months, whatever. Right. The other one, they're never backsliding again. And you could, you could put them in a sea of candy and they'd rather starve. Like they're just not doing it. Yeah. This is the difference between someone who's made a decision and someone who's not. Someone who's truly embodying their decision and someone who's not. And so, like I said, I made a decision to uplift others, which meant no gaslighting. It's like going cold turkey. You got to cut it out. And even though I may have gaslit one or two times afterwards, mm -hmm. it felt so terrible. It just reaffirmed my decision. I was just like, what? Like, yeah, I was right. Never doing that again. Right. And the same thing will happen with the two dieters. One will slip up and break their diet. And they'll just be like, oh, well, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's over now. The other one will slip up and be like, this goes against my decision, my identity, and everything I believe. I literally can't believe I'm having a crisis of conscience and I'm having a heart attack and I am never doing this again. So we'll just, they'll just reaffirm it and it'll make their decision stronger. Right. Um, so that was the case for me. Well, thank you for sharing that. And that's really interesting because I would have assumed that it was like something difficult to kind of unlearn to do, but I, you're right. When you make a decision, it's like this for me, any decision, any real decision I made is like a light switch. It just, it's done. Whatever it is, when it was quitting drugs, when it was losing weight, when it was leaving my, my husband or when it was moving here was like every decision that I have made serious decision. It was like that, like instant. And when I did backslide, like you said, or, or something happened immediately, it reaffirmed my decision and I knew I would go forward. So that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so it seems like gaslighting is a form of bullying to get people to, to do what you want. Right. So let me, let me reframe my question. Is there levels to it that aren't as bad as like full out gaslighting, like completely messing with someone's mental? That's obviously not a great thing, but maybe like a tiny flame of gaslighting. <laughs> is, is that okay? Or, or no, is there so you're mostly right in that it's basically bullying people to get what you want. Mm -hmm. It's stealthy ninja emotional bullying Yeah, that most people aren't self-aware enough to ever recognize anyways. And like so many things in life, there are levels to it. Very few things are black and white, mm -hmm. although making a decision might be one of them. Yes. <laughs> like we just said. But I'm not sure how relevant that is because whether you're stealing a little or stealing a lot, what really matters is, are you personally okay with this? Is this how you want to live your life? Mm. Whether you're killing an ant or waging war, all that really matters is, are you personally okay with this? Is this how you want to live your life? Because ultimately it's you who has to live with the decision and everyone around you is, is doing the same thing. Like they're killing ants or mosquitoes or not, mm -hmm. or they're hunting deer or hunting lions or whatever they're up to, mm -hmm. or they're waging war. Every individual human has to find their own spot or path that feels acceptable to them. Some people will never harm a single insect, but their immune system is nuking bacteria all day long. Okay. Their immune system might be genociding a certain strain of disease. <laughs> right. How far do you want to take it? So, what can we say is acceptable? What is right and what is wrong? What is okay and what is not? What level is acceptable? Are you okay with a little tiny bit of gaslighting to help your child get back on their path? Are you okay with mass gaslighting to win a political election? And you can use gaslighting in positive ways too. Oh, okay. You can use gaslighting to convince yourself of a more positive reality. Yeah, sure. But even that can go to extremes. Some insane, insane people 
take that to a very far extreme. And they've literally convinced themselves of a totally new reality. And they're causing harm left and right everywhere they go because of this reality. They don't, but to them, they're happy now. Sure. Like dudes putting on a dress and, and going into the locker rooms. Again, these are some <laughs> triggering examples. <laughs> um, we can get into whether or not that's gaslighting if you want to. But I was thinking more like a dementia patient. Yeah, no, I know. I was just living kidding, in really, the past. But you're right. Yeah. So like most things, you can use it positively or negatively. Like physical violence, you can use it to feed a tribe and, and keep a species going, or you can use it to defend your family or your uh, young from predators, or you can use it harmfully and destructively to take revenge on other people. Mm -hmm. Similarly, emotional violence, gaslighting, can be used to help a dementia patient or help yourself stop beating up on yourself and see yourself in a more positive light can help you to create a new reality that you or identity that you eventually become. Yeah. Can be wonderful. Or you can use it to bully people and manipulate them and get your way at cost to them. You can cause them harm with gaslighting, which is how it's most often used. Right. Similarly, physical violence is most often used poorly. I I actually never thought of that we could use it in a positive way. So that, that was really helpful. I've done it um, when I was a uh, hundred pounds heavier and gaslit myself that I don't need like junk food. I'm a healthy person. I love to, to move my body. And until like it became reality, until those things were true, I had to gaslight myself for them to become true. And same when I was getting clean, because in the moment before I got clean, those moments, those last few moments, I remember thinking, it's really hard. I can't do this. And then I had to flip the switch. I am never going to wake up in the ICU again. God has given me another chance to live this life. I'm clean and healthy. Not doing drugs is easy. People have fun all the time when they're clean and sober. I got this. And I had to gaslight myself because, man, that detox, that that getting sober was was not easy alone. But having this gaslighting myself made it easier. So I never, ever considered it like that. So thank you. Yeah, it's because most people call positive gaslighting by a different name. They call it affirmations or self-talk or positive right. self-talk. Yeah. But it's really just gaslighting yeah, it's in a different thing. way. Yeah. In a healthier way, a more productive, positive way. So we use gaslighting to describe the negative kind of this emotional tactic. Mm -hmm. And we use positive self-talk or affirmation to describe the positive side of this emotional tactic. But overall, it's the same emotional tactic. It's just positive gaslighting or negative affirmation. <laughs> right. Right. And and that that makes so much sense. Thank you for explaining that. And and now I kind of see I can see all the times that I've changed things in my life using this tactic, using affirmations and uh mirror work and all this, but really I just use positive gaslighting. So that's pretty cool. All right. You know, I'm a big fan of taking something negative and making it into a positive. So this is awesome. Thanks. Yay. Um, so what are some ways that we can challenge someone or confront someone who is gaslighting us without doing it back? That's a great question. Thanks. And if you want to challenge them directly, you want to use logic, evidence, and critical thinking. And this is a big part of why people have trouble dealing with gaslighting is because our society has been neglecting critical thinking for a long time. Mm -hmm. And our systems and institutions and ruling classes or whoever's setting the agenda for society, whether intentionally or by default, encourage us all towards even less critical thinking. We are trained not to do it. Right. We can all do it at any time. No one controls our, our minds. We're free to think critically about anything, but it takes time and energy and effort and most people are looking to avoid it. And that's fine. It sounds all well and good. Great. I just ha live an easy life. I barely have to think at all. I, I don't have to think critically or dig deep into anything. I can just look on the shallow surface, form a conclusion, become an extremist, become a radical, and get upset at everything that doesn't agree with me. Sure, you can, but there's a hidden consequence, which is you become super vulnerable to gaslighting. 
the media can gaslight you, politics can gaslight you, social media can gaslight you, your friends can gaslight you, your partner and spouse can gaslight you. You have zero defenses against gaslighting. The only people who have solid defenses against gaslighting are those with extreme talent for critical thinking. Someone who's built up a talent for critical thinking, they've practiced it. And rather than getting trained away from it by society, they're like, no, I'm going to think on my own and I'm going to think carefully about everything that I consume mentally, emotionally, or physically. These people are very difficult to gaslight. Yeah. Like you. Not that I But I've been gaslit. Well, I've been gaslit. Yeah. I've been gaslit by you. And I'm good at critical thinking. So what does that say? Uh, One, it says you're really good at gaslighting. And two, it says that even with such strong defenses, you're not invincible or invulnerable to this. And so it pays to be diligent and keep an eye out and keep sharpening your critical thinking skills. So as I was saying, if you want to challenge someone directly, you want to use logic, evidence, and critical thinking, which means if someone gaslights you and tries to tell you that reality isn't reality or how you think it went down isn't how it went down or the emotional abuse you're feeling isn't really there and it's all in your head or whatever they're gaslighting you about, you don't jump into arguing with them because then they'll win the argument right there and you'll leave thinking like, man, I guess I was wrong or I don't know how that went so poorly or whatever. Instead, you just make a mental note. I'm going to think about this carefully and critically when I have time. Right. I'm going to start tracking evidence. So if they say to you, no, I'm not spying on you or snooping in your phone, but your gut is screaming, like, I know they are. I know they are. You don't argue. Instead, you set up a spy thing on your phone, like a little tracker or usage tracker. Mm -hmm. And it tracks usage. Yeah. And then you let a week or two go by. And as it tracks the usage, you mark down dates and times and you're like, someone's using my phone tonight, but you still don't have proof for them. They can still weasel out of it. Well, that could have been someone else or something. So you start marking in the times. Was it when you were in the toilet and they were in the room? Was it when you had guests over or was it when you guys were alone in the house? And so on and so forth. You build evidence to support your claim, your reality, what your gut says is right. Not to be mean, not to be spiteful or whatever. Right. Just this is how you own the gaslighter. Data. You get data. For yourself and for them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, And then... You use logic, like, well, these are the times and someone used my phone and logically there was no one else in the house. I, You can try to gaslight me all you want, but this one's tough to argue with. And now you're using critical thinking. Who else could it be? Obviously, it's you. Okay, so I get this. This is, this is, this is good. Sure, but that takes a lot of work. And yeah. this is why people don't want to do it. It right. takes the gaslighter no effort to be like, no, it wasn't me. And then say some manipulative stuff. Yeah. But it takes you weeks of effort to disprove them. Right. How fair is that? The person doing the evil shit has no trouble at all doing this. They can go do it left and right to a million people. Uh, Whatever. But the abused people end up having to rearrange their whole life to go in and sort this out. Yeah. That's annoying. Well, so this is why people generally won't call out gaslighters. This is another reason. It takes way too much effort. You can say whatever you want. And I'm like, but no, like, this is how you run a business where you aren't doing things properly or whatever. You're like, yes, I am. I'm like, well, (laughs) now I have to set up the tracker on your computer and prove you're doing it wrong. It's like, whatever. It's not worth the hassle for most gaslighters. So this is why it's recommended not to challenge them directly. This is why it's recommended to gain distance from them and separate yourself from the gaslighters and don't participate with them and don't engage with them. And if people did this, all the gaslighters would be alone. They would be lonely because everyone would flee from them. Right. But the media will gaslight us with clickbait and weird shit and we'll just gobble it up. No one's boycotting the media. No one's taking a media detox. Oh, Lord, I know. Right. So they're just like, all right, great. We could gaslight with every headline. These guys eat it up. Yeah. So there's no punishment for them. And if you want to prove the media wrong, you have to go do some investigative journalism and like start a career to prove the media wrong. It takes, <laughs> yeah. it's really hard. It's, it's really true. annoying. It's true. So the right thing to do is just everyone to separate and flee from the gaslighters and their isolation and loneliness and, hey, no one wants to interact with me at all will be the wake-up call for them. And that's the easy solution because now you don't have to do all the work. You just leave. Right. It's heaven. And so if you're in a, like a narcissistic or abusive relationship or one where people are gaslighting you, or if you have that with the media or a politician, 
the easy solution is just leave. Stop trying to play their game. Stop trying to solve it for them. Stop trying to challenge them and call them out because they still win. It's still huge amounts of effort and logic and evidence and critical thinking and burden of proof on you while they get to throw left and right emotional things, just whatever comes out of their brain to win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I noticed a lot of people online do this. They will make a comment or a video and then people are like, you're gaslighting people or the opposite. They, they gaslight in the comments and then they, they run away. Like there's no repercussions for yeah. this. And then you're left to defend it to them and you have to write a, like a 20 page essay to prove them wrong or something. Now the burden's on you. Yeah. They win. Like it's too much work. It takes all your time and energy for their bullshit. Yeah. They're doing the, the, the crazy, ridiculous thing. They're doing the emotional abuse. They're doing the gaslighting. And now you get sucked in and it just makes your life even harder. So you can challenge gaslighters directly. You can call them out. You can win with evidence. Mm-hmm. But it's like having a giant court case for every freaking sentence that they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so gaslighters will generally win in most arguments just, just through sheer ease of effort. Right. Right. Well, their opponent has a giant burden of proof. It's true. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter because ultimately you're meant to know who you are. You're meant to know your own reality. You're meant to trust your own senses and your own critical thinking and your own trail of evidence. And you're meant to be around people that feel good to be around. Be around people who uplift you and you feel that they're definitely 100% in your corner and in your best interest. And if you get even a hint of gaslighting, especially over a prolonged period or through a pattern of behavior, just leave. There's 8 billion people on the planet. And if you're too attached or clingy or invested in changing this person or teaching them their gaslighting ways are wrong, that's on you. Like, Like a gaslighter will mesh perfectly with a clinger. If you're a clinger, Gaslighters will love you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's on you. Don't be a clinger. You got to solve that. Yeah. Thanks. That's really helpful. Okay. So woke liberals tend to use a lot of gaslighting to argue their points. However, they also claim to be loving and open minded. Um, but if they were, really like this why would they use gaslighting in their arguments you've been like kind of (laughs) anti-liberal lately no i'm so i don't know if we're gonna put this part in the podcast or not but i was raised to to be feminist and 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 to be inclusive and loving to people i feel like now the 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 liberals from when i was growing up are completely different to what's out there now. They are. I think they're ridiculous. I think they are over the top. I think they just want to make people uncomfortable. I think they don't they they want people to care about their feelings and they don't care about other people's feelings. And for me as as a former liberal, that's not how I stood. I used to believe in we vill- it takes a village crap, but I don't anymore. So maybe I'm a little pokey with them a little bit and and maybe I I say things about them. uh, But but really it's because I'm hyper offended by what the party that I grew up believing in and being a part of has become. I'm not saying I'm great and I was perfect or anything. I voted Democrat from the time I was 18 until the last elect, not the, this last election, but before, you know, and, and now what they are is just a giant joke to me. So this is, this may be why that comes across. So yeah, I get it. But then that bias will come out in your questions. Sure. Because everybody gaslights both sides, all sides, all parties, all politicians. Like it's hard to find, it might be impossible to find a politician that doesn't gaslight. That's true. That's right. So, you know, we could argue that one side does it more, I guess, but it doesn't really matter. Like, what one side steals ten of your oranges, the other side steals fifteen of your oranges. Like, you're right. Because, you're still getting robbed of your oranges. Okay. Well, when Trump was running for office, he gaslit the nation, and, and still, and and I am not a Trump supporter or fan even if I now lean 
towards the right. I don't call myself a conservative either, but I, I, you're right. A whole, like the whole time, all those years in my mind, the right was the one that were stealing oranges. gaslighting and stealing the oranges. Yeah. So you're right. I know. Um, so, so maybe the liberals aren't the right target. Target or part of my question. You had a target in your question. Okay, as a group, as a whole, anybody, whatever label they want to use, who are loving and kind and still use gaslighting, because the Republicans, deep down, again, they've also changed. They're not the Republicans I grew up with either. So deep down, they want the same things that you and I want. Traditional values, traditional roles. We believe in these things. Oh, no? Do do we not believe in traditional values and roles? Have I ever said that? Yes. Yes, you you have. Well, quote so, me, quote me. <laughs> you don't believe in traditional values and roles. I took it out of our casting call to Prager you specifically because that's not me. I'm not a traditional person. Did you read the sales page? I had a section on tradition. Okay. Uh so I guess the traditional roles I mean are between men and women, the the gender roles. This is what I mean by traditional roles. Okay. Sure. But if you go back to our old men and women podcast mm-hmm. or relationship podcast or whatever, yeah, I make a point of saying uh, the woman can do the work and the man can stay home or this, like anything can happen. It just has to be two people working something out in synergy, right? Mm-hmm. It shouldn't matter. Labels shouldn't matter. Roles shouldn't matter. <laughs> what matters is two human beings coming together and working something out for themselves. And I don't judge any of them. No, but I'm talking about us. Yeah, like if I was with someone else who didn't believe so strongly in traditional gender roles, maybe I would handle it a different way. Like I just want harmony and synergy. And when we first met, you were super masculine. So I just played the feminine role. You make the decisions, you run the household, you do whatever, you spend the money, you do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I just value synergy and harmony. So you always have these sides arguing. Let's go non-traditional gender roles. No, let's go traditional gender roles. And I'm sitting here like the third way. Like, I just want harmony between people. <laughs> Can we just have some harmony and synergy? You people who like non-traditional, go be together and be non-traditional. As long as it works for you and you're happy, I'm happy. You people who like traditional roles, you go be traditional together. As long as there's synergy and harmony in that, great. More human <laughs> beings, more human beings having harmony and synergy. Hallelujah. I would love that as much as possible all across the planet. Please give me as much harmony and synergy between couples or polycules or whatever they are as possible. And I don't need any labels and I don't need to take any sides to do that. My only side is the side of harmony and synergy for more people. Okay. So we've kind of veered off a little bit of, of our podcast. So that's we need the to price say. of a podcast. Well, I think we should take I'm that. not taking it out. Okay, don't take it it's out. It's fire. <laughs> anyway, I agree uh, with all the things that you just said. Oh, good. Um, and it's fine. I do believe in traditional uh, rules. And I believe in, in harmonizing with that. And I love you. Just like I did when we first met. Yeah, it's true. My view hasn't changed. Mine have changed tremendously. So, so I adapt. You do. And and you do fairly well. So I guess. But I prefer traditional gender roles. Ah, there we go. Okay. You, your preference is traditional gender roles. Yeah, but that's roles. very different than believing in them as a concept. No, okay. But fair enough. But this is the core of what I was saying anyway. Sure. So you prefer traditional gender roles. Sorry for yeah. using the wrong words to describe it, but but you're right. It's important. Okay. So your preference is traditional gender roles as are mine. Like I could go on and on about all this stuff and I don't want to. I'm going to talk about gaslighting. So the question really is, are anybody who calls themselves a loving individual, a kind, inclusive, open-minded, like the left, why would they use gaslighting if they're really the, the kind of person they claim to be? Great question. Thanks. The answer is simple because it works. It's easy and it works. Gaslighting, like I said before, takes no effort on the part of the gaslighter, very little. And 
the only way they can get called out on it is by someone who truly knows themselves and who is willing to do all the critical thinking, logic, and evidential legwork to prove them wrong. So it's a gimme for them. This is the best tactic ever. Most people won't even notice it. And the ones who do, they'll be caught up in, in investigative journalism and court cases for years trying to prove that they were gaslit. Right. It's a gimme. This is the nuke. This is the emotional nuke. Why wouldn't you use gaslighting to get your way? Right? And they all have an agenda. Of course. They all want to be right. They all want to convince people. They all want to get people on their side. They all want to make the world in their image. They want society to be the way they want it to be. You can feel the agenda a mile away. Yes. And so if you hand people like that an emotional nuke, what would you do with it? I just use it. Yeah. They use it because it works. The thing is, there are consequences. There are always consequences. Nukes have consequences. Of course. And so then you get a society that doesn't trust the media or the government or their partner or their spouse or their... Themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They don't trust anybody. Right. And so now you have a, a trustless society. They don't trust doctors. They don't trust psychologists. They don't trust anybody. They don't trust Big Pharma. They don't trust... It's like a huge backlash. Because when you've been gaslit so long, there's only one option. Trust. You're manipulating me and I don't believe anything you say. Yeah. Trust no one. Yeah. Yeah. And so here we are. And so now the, the nuke is, is losing its power. How do you gaslight a society that trusts no one? You can't. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why we have the division. Sure. And it's just starting. Like, yeah. The trust can, if this keeps up, if the gaslighting keeps up, then the mistrust will keep up and you're going to have something ridiculous in 10 years. I agree. Totally agree. Especially with deep fakes and AI and you can make people say whatever you want with video and audio now. Am I recording this podcast or did someone just put words in my mouth? <laughs> right. Should you trust? Am I myself? Should you trust what you're watching on the screen right now? The mistrust rises, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent points. And um, sorry about going off like in a different direction there for a minute to all our listeners. That tangent was value. That tangent is what people need to see and hear. That tangent is what people are thinking about and wondering in their heads all the time about the left and the right and mm -hmm. about traditional roles and non-traditional roles. And no one digs deep into it. It was a worthwhile tangent and it adds to the podcast. You need to see stuff as added value, right? Yeah. And if not, I'll cut it. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. Okay. So we're going to move on from there. Um, all right. So people recognize gaslighting more often now because of all that stuff that you said, we tend to be a little bit more aware of it only because we're told by others, they're gaslighting, they're gaslighting. It's not really an internal, I recognize it one-on-one -on -one as much as, as a whole by the media or by the left or the right or, or whoever as, as a group. And I also noticed that one of the things that people are doing uh, on TikTok anyway, I don't, I don't know the other social platforms, but there's a lot of doing a lot of self-diagnosis and, and I feel like this might be a form of gaslighting. So I wanted to ask you, is it? That's a fantastic question. Thanks. Nobody asks that. <laughs> um, it can be. Mm -hmm. If you watch our labels episode of the podcast, we briefly touch on self-diagnosing. And the point mm -hmm. is that any label anyone chooses for themselves or any label that anyone slaps on someone else can be a form of gaslighting. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. Okay. And it can be positive gaslighting or negative gaslighting. For example, many parents, when they have children, they will say you're smart or you're beautiful or you're whatever. And it's a positive form of gaslighting that makes the child into that. And then some people could argue you shouldn't do that at all. You should just have zero labels ever when you talk to your child ever, just never label them. Because what if they want to grow up to be ugly or dumb? What if they want to choose something oh else, God. right? Yeah, uh, or a different gender or all this stuff. Sure. Yeah. The point is, any form of labeling can be gaslighting. And you might even argue that every form of labeling is a form of gaslighting. 
but this gets into philosophy is like, what is reality? Are we living in a virtual reality? Are we part of the matrix? Is there any objective truth? Yada, yada, yada. So if we're just dealing with normal life, everyday stuff, what matters most is, are you accepting labels that serve you? This is the question. That's a great question. Every single label on earth that you take onto yourself, that you accept from others or from yourself can either serve you or hinder you and hold you back. Right. If I accept the label of fantastic healer, great at self-healing, strong immune system, great nervous system, or like you did, uh, clean and sober, easy to quit addiction, mm -hmm. and other labels like that, whether they're true at the moment or not, those labels can serve you by breaking you out of a, a previous loop or a poor behavior or something that's harming you. So you can use those labels to gaslight yourself into a, a more positive reality that serves you. On the other hand, you could be given, I don't know, some extra toilet paper by your landlord. There you go. I have an extra stack. Right. And you can be like, great, but it won't pay my bills. I guess I'm just unlucky. I guess I'm just poor. This doesn't help me. I'll never get out of this dark place and so on and so forth. And these are labels you're accepting on yourself too. Right. But they don't serve you. You could have said, this is a blessing. I'm fortunate. This is abundance. Yeah. Maybe I can sell this or this will save me money next week. You, know? you could really have positive gaslighting about this truth or this reality. And it could serve you and get you to a new truth or new reality. Or you can use negative gaslighting to pull yourself down and weigh yourself down and diminish everything that you're getting and receiving. And the same goes for self-diagnosis. If we take on a label or a diagnosis of, I have ADHD, or I have kleptomania, or I have schizophrenia, or I have depression, that's fine. You're welcome to have those labels. But take a second and think to yourself, are those labels serving me? Is this what I want to identify with? Because every day that goes by that you identify with these labels, is a day that you are perpetuating that status. You will never break free of it until you start changing the labels. You can't break free of your current reality without gaslighting yourself or positive affirming yourself into a new reality. Even if it's gentle and subtle, like I may have ADHD now, but I'm healing. And now you have the healing labels, right? Yes. Or I'm going to be the first person in my family to beat ADHD. It's like, this is, you, you haven't done it yet, right? but it's positive gaslighting to a new reality. On the flip side, what often happens is that a friend or a family member or someone who believes in you, they'll do their best to say to you that you are not those negative labels. You are not your ADHD. Mm -hmm. You are not your schizophrenia. You are not your kleptomania. Mm -hmm. Those are conditions. Those are temporary conditions that you can be. Other people on the planet have beaten them and you can beat them too. And even if other people on the planet haven't beaten them, you can be the first. Let's work on this together. Let's search for a solution. I got your back. I want to help you. But often what happens is someone will just gaslight themselves back into the condition. Yeah. They'll argue for their limitations. They'll argue against the person who's clearly trying to free them from their, their label, free them from their shackles of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean every diagnosis is wrong. It doesn't mean they're, they're not valid. It doesn't mean you can't have them. You can, but owning them and accepting them and identifying with them is gaslighting yourself into them for a longer period of time, maybe permanently. Whereas identifying with overcoming them, identifying with healing them, identifying with beating them, identifying with transforming them, identifying with any of these labels is positive gaslighting yourself into a new reality where you actually are free from them. So just like a partner or a politician or society or the media can gaslight you into believing shitty things about yourself and the world, uh, you can do the same thing to yourself. And just like a inspiring guru or motivational speaker or influencer can inspire you to believe in good things about yourself, you can do the same on your own. So I kind of rambled, but I hope this clarifies whether self-diagnosis is or isn't gaslighting. Yeah, it was really helpful, actually. So thank you. 
And I want to ask, also add to that. Um, I spent 24 years in therapy. I spent 24 years on uh, all kinds of cocktails of, of medications. And they gaslit me for years that I, first I was depressed, then I was bipolar, then I was anxious and yada, yada, and, and multiple admissions into the hospital. And when I finally had enough and asked when am I going to get better? I want to feel better. When am I going to get better? They gaslit me and told me never. You will never heal. You will never get better. And I said, F you, I'm done with this. That day, I remember, I went home and I said, I am finished with all these meds, all this therapy. This is done. Never, ever, ever again. And now I did spend some time after that having a hard time continuing to gaslight myself uh, even though like, it, there was a good 10 years after that, before we met, I had some bouts of depression here and there. And, and I had anxiety. I had six panic attacks a day. Uh, but I felt like I had more control because I knew, like you said, I was healing. I knew I, w- I could get better. I knew I just didn't know how, but I knew I could. And I knew my therapist and my doctor, my psychiatrist were wrong, that I did not need those meds. And I was right. And when we met and I became self-aware and I had purpose and I learned to love myself and have self-awareness, I started to gaslight myself in the positive way of now I can heal from these things. And now four years later, I have no panic attacks, any bouts of sadness. I don't even call depression. Any bouts of sadness, they're always a situational, like Oh, my son is hurt and he's millions of or hundreds of miles away from me. I can't be with him when he's going through his kidney stones or my daughter had her baby. I can't be with her during the birth. Like these kinds of things where I felt sad and like, hmm, which is normal. But like laying in bed, I can't move for days and days and on end until the stupid cycle completes itself. That that's that's not a thing anymore. And if someone who spent 24 years in in depression and anxiety and medication and and hospital admissions, if I can gaslight myself out of that and heal and move forward, anyone can. And psychiatrists and, and therapists all are gaslighting people that they can't do it because they want to continue to get paid. So- Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. And that's really powerful. It's probably going to trigger all the doctors and psychologists Good. and therapists, uh, which is not what I w- want to do because I'm not against them. Like, Oh, no, no. I'm they, not against them either. They provide a valuable service and they're helpful on the, on the earth and, and part of society. And they've helped tons of people. It's just that they've become helpful, like, like a mechanic who started out as helpful. This is a mm-hmm. great mechanic. Sure. But when they realize you're the gravy train or they're trained by the higher ups or big pharma or whoever's in charge of the curriculum for them, they're trained to keep people in the system. They're trained to keep people in therapy. They might not even know they're doing it, but it's like a mechanic being trained to use poor parts or parts from China. So they're they're bound to break. They think they're doing a great job and doing the right thing, but they're really just keeping people coming back to the mechanic. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of doctors and psychiatrists are trained to diagnose and keep them diagnosed because that will keep them in the system and coming back. So are you saying they've been gaslighted by the system, so they're gaslighting their patients? That's a great observation. That's exactly uh, often the case. And I'm not saying this applies to every doctor or therapist. I'm not saying this applies to every society or every culture or every system, but it's something that exists and it's something to watch out for and hopefully our viewers can be smart enough and think critically enough to know whether they're being gaslit into accepting a diagnosis or whether they're better off doing what you did and putting their foot down and saying no to this diagnosis. I'm going to be different. I'm going to heal this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to overcome this. I'm beating this. These are my new labels. These are my new diagnosis. You diagnose me as having this. I diagnose myself as having beat this or as making progress on this. I diagnose myself as impressing you with my progress. And that's something every individual has to figure out for themselves. If you want to accept your doctors and psychiatrists' beliefs and views and tactics and methods and 
their reality of what your life is going to be, you can. But there are also plenty of people out there, if you do your research, who said F you to those doctors and created their own reality. It's impressive once you start looking into it. Countless stories of people who've cured stuff and beaten stuff mm -hmm. that were supposedly unbeatable. You know, it's true. Uh, there's a book, there's a book actually called Cured, Research into Spontaneous Healing or something that just explores like case after case of it. Nice. But yeah, good talk on gaslighting. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, for explaining gaslighting, for being open and honest about your own experiences with gaslighting. I know it's not your favorite thing. I can always tell by your reaction when I say you were so good at it and stuff. So <laughs> but I appreciate it because uh, by being vulnerable and sharing our life, this helps other people. So thank you that was so terrible. much. I know. I know. I know you are. I, and I know because well, I don't do it anymore. No, I know that you were really good at it and, and terrible because when we play around, you're so good at it. And 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 I joke around with you and I tell you you're so great and ki the king of gaslighting. But if you did, if you really were to to unleash that on people, man, yeah. yeah but there are consequences. Yeah, of course. There's bad karma. Of Most course. gaslighters have health problems. Like. Weird things happen in your body and your mind and your cells when you're continually gaslighting someone. It will get you what you want in the short term. But like most things in life, you take the easy way out and you look for the short term, you do not reap rewards in the long term. And so it just lost me all my friends and made me isolated and alone. And it's it's not good. And it made me hateful and hurtful and cruel to people. And that in turn hurt me. And, and made me a very lonely and sad person. So, Exactly. But it also made me really good at positive self-talk and yes. believing in myself yeah. and others and, and positive affirmations and helping them bridge the gap to a new reality. So I don't regret it and I'm not sad about it. Uh, I just, that was not a great time in my life and this is not the way to use gaslighting. So, Well, yeah, and if you hadn't, taught me all this, then I wouldn't have been able to gaslight myself into a better life and be the person I am today. And I love myself and I'm so proud of, of how far I've come. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Like I said, for your time and your story and for explaining things, the tangent and, and everything that we talked about today, you are an amazing human being. I love you deeply as your as your partner, as your wife, as as any way, every way that I possibly can. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, I love you too. Thank you. And also, I want to thank you for helping me to 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 not suffer anymore from depression and and anxiety because that was crippling me for a long time yeah well you beat it and overcame it so you can be happy now. i am happy about <laughs> it but i get emotional um it's not really even for me i know a lot of people out there uh they really believe that this is who they are and they really believe that there's no hope to get better and they're told over and over again like i was not by me uh no uh by the people that are supposed to help them there these people are supposed to be helping you and taking care of you and they're not and and so uh by you helping me to get over those things now it's part of my purpose and my mission is to help them too so like yeah he, thank you my pleasure Okay, I need to dry my face before we get to the conclusion. Do you have anything that you would like to add for the audience? Anything you want to say, tell them, and share your final thoughts, please. Understanding cures so many things, right? They say knowledge is power, but it's more like understanding is power. There's knowledge floating around everywhere in the information age, but there's very minimal understanding in comparison. This podcast was made to help you understand gaslighting on a deeper level. And by you understanding it, you are empowered. I want you and as many other people as we can reach to understand gaslighting and to see it when it goes on, on social media, in politics, uh, in our own relationships. 
and to know if it's serving us, if it's a positive form of gaslighting or the most common form of negative gaslighting, and to be wise enough to know whether we should take the time and effort to challenge that gaslighting and call those people out, or if it's better just to move on and boycott them and move to another place or another area, another media, another political party, whatever. And I believe if we all do that, it's going to transform the world into a much better place. One where people are looking out for one another and uplifting one another and where we can all call out gaslighting and emotional abuse whenever it happens and avoid it for ourselves. I'm already doing the best I can at this and I hope you'll join me. And that's why our book and this podcast is called Eyes Wide Open. Keep rising.